Today I'm going over some polls and some odds that show Kamala Harris has now taken the lead over Donald Trump in the poly market odds to win the 2024 presidential election. I'm going to be breaking down how this happened, where it happened, and how the polls match up with this and what this means for the 2024 election. So if you've been following the presidential race for the last few weeks or so, you would know that since Kamala Harris has gotten to the race, the polling averages in a lot of places and states have gotten much closer. And it seems that day by day, Kamala Harris has been kind of inching up closer and closer to Donald Trump. And we're seeing the first signs now that perhaps this momentum could be temporary, but could also be here to stay as Kamala Harris has taken over uh, the lead in the poly market odds to win the presidential election, in a large part doing so by Kamala Harris now being favored to win the state of Pennsylvania, the state of Michigan, and the state of Wisconsin. Now, uh, just an interesting thing to note is, of course, these are just odds and it's not the end-all be-all, so take what uh, I'm showing you and I'm talking about here with a grain of salt, but it's significant. I mean, this is real money, real results, and people are saying that they think Kamala Harris is going to win these three important Rust Belt states. And it's important to note because these three states gave Donald Trump the presidency in 2016 and coincidentally flipped the presidency from him back to Joe Biden to the Democrat in 2020. So these three states are very, very important and are the most important swing states in this election, in my opinion. And the fact that Kamala Harris is now favored to win these swing states in this um, poly market odds is very significant. So Harris now has a 52% chance to win. Trump has 46% chance to win according to the odds. And some other swing states here, Nevada is considered still a toss up, but Harris is narrowly leading in these odds. Arizona, Trump is narrowly leading in these odds. And Georgia, Trump is narrowly leading in those odds. So Harris 52, Trump 46. And now I'm gonna go into the polls and just show you why this may have happened. The updated polls coming from the state of Michigan today have Harris at 48.7% to Trump's 46.3% in the polling average. And this is something that, I mean, not to toot my own horn here, but I'm not going to say I'm necessarily too surprised about this, especially in the state of Michigan. I've been saying before, of the three Rust Belt states, Michigan is the most Democratic of the three. And when Trump was leading Biden and Harris before, I'm showing sure the polling average, it ended up where Trump was at 43.8, Biden was at 42.2, at one point it was 47 to 46, Trump got maybe the highest he ever got was 48%. I can't make this clear enough that Trump was not getting 50% of the vote and getting a big enough number to really feel good about how he was doing in Michigan. When Trump versus Harris first started off, it was 47.7 for Trump to 46.7 for Harris. And look what's happened. Harris's numbers in the state poll in the state polling average, Harris has shot up to 48.7. Trump is at 46.3. So even though Trump's support has gone down by about a percentage point, Harris his support has really skyrocketed. And Donald Trump, I'll show you what I mean by this. This is North Carolina. I'm going to go to the state of Michigan. Donald Trump lost the state of Michigan in 2020 with 50.6 percent for but. Uh, for Biden to 47.8 for Trump in 2020. Now let's go to 2016 when Trump won the state. 47.3 for Clinton and 47.5 for Trump. Even though Trump won this state in 2016, he didn't get above 50% of the vote. He did not get a majority of the vote. He won with a plurality. And now as we look at the polls, Trump is getting 46.3%. And before that, he was getting 47.8%. 48%, Trump still wasn't getting a majority of the support in the poll, which is what I was saying that at the time, it looked like Biden wouldn't be able to, but if the Democratic candidate could consolidate that undecided vote into their uh, column, there would be enough independent votes to make up the margin and lead over Trump. And it seems Kamala Harris in these polls so far has done that. Now, of course, again, you always have to take polls with a grain of salt. We won't know until election day if they're correct or not. But this is all we have to go off of right now. And so far, Kamala Harris has shored up a lot of Democratic support and at least some independent support because she wouldn't go from 47% or Biden was at 42%. She wouldn't be nearing 49% of the vote if she had not shored up a lot of Democratic and independent support. 
So Michigan being 2.4 points now in the RCP average of this state certainly suggests why Michigan is now in her column. The state of Wisconsin is not too dissimilar. However, the fact that Wisconsin is closer and Trump is actually performing a little bit better than Michigan in Wisconsin, but the same problem persists. When Trump was leading over Biden, he was getting near 49.3% of the vote. Biden it ended up being Trump 46.6, Biden 43.3, not getting a majority of the vote. When Trump and Harris started off, it was 48.5 to 47.8. Now when Harris is ahead, it's 48.8 to 48. Trump has a problem where he can't get 50% of the vote in a lot of these polls, enough to make him feel pretty confident that he's doing well enough in these states to win. What this means, at very least, is Trump versus Harris is going to be very, very close and competitive, and now Harris has taken a lead in the state of Wisconsin. Do it largely in part due to the New York Times Siena poll today, which has Harris up four, while every other poll has either Trump or Harris up one or two. This poll has given a boost to Harris, where Harris is now ahead. It's 0.8%. It's a margin that could be made up. It's 48.8 to 48. There's still undecided vote left. But the point that I've been making, which is why I think the Trump campaign really can't be thinking they're in a great position to win right now. They need to be thinking of Harris took the lead and we need to get the lead back because Harris has shored up a lot of Democratic support and independent support. And it's possible if she's done this, she may be able to get more. In the polls so far, I've shown that if Trump's campaign does not turn things around and take some of these numbers Harris has gotten and kind of minimize them or bring her support down, it's looking like Harris might win this election. And the poly market odds certainly suggest that. Next, we go to the state of Pennsylvania, where Trump is still leading in the RCP average. But again, this may spell some potential danger for Trump because, yes, he's leading in every poll except for one up until the New York Times Siena poll. But that one poll has brought it down to 0.8%. And look where Trump is sitting right now. 47.8%. Harris is at 47. We know on election day, Kamala Harris will get more than 47% of the vote in Pennsylvania. Just like Hillary Clinton did, just like Joe Biden did. Donald Trump will probably get more than 47.8% as well. But how does the undecided vote, how does that go for the two candidates? At least the trend of Pennsylvania right now is Harris started at 443 Trump is at 48.3. Harris has been going up. Trump has been going down. And that's been pretty consistent in almost every swing state so far. So Trump right now, on paper, he has a good shot to win, as Harris does. But it's definitely Harris has the momentum and Trump has lost a bit of the momentum. And Trump's campaign, I think, now has to pivot and think that he's losing, not that he's winning, and need to double their effort to try to win. Because if they go with the strategy of everything's fine and we're going to win on election day... There's three more months left in the campaign. If things remain the same, then Trump, I think, will probably lose on Election Day. If the Trump campaign turns things around, then this is going to be a very close election. He has a good shot of winning, but it's really a jump ball right now. This is not the blowout election that I think the Trump campaign thought it would be. And Harris has really turned around and got a lot of the Biden support back that may have left him before. This is a very close race now. So much so, we go to the real clear politics electoral map without toss-up states, Trump is favored to win 287 to 251, but look, Wisconsin is blue and Michigan is blue. Pennsylvania, which I just showed you, only 0. I want to get this right, 0.8% lead for Trump. If Pennsylvania goes blue, those 19 electoral votes go to Harris, that gets her to 270, Trump will be at 268, Harris will win. So these three toss-up states are so very important and Trump needs them to win, or he at least needs one of them. If Pennsylvania goes to Harris in the next um, in the next few days in the polling average, Harris will then be favored to win. And you may see these poly market odds that are at 5246. These this might be 6040, 6535 in favor of Harris if there becomes solid evidence that Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin are definitely going for her. We're not going to know until election day, but. It's really not hard to figure out. I've been saying all along, if one of these states is not won by Donald Trump, Donald Trump does not really have a realistic pathway to victory. Because to win the election without these three states, he probably needs to pick off a New Hampshire, a Virginia, or a Minnesota. And those states are much harder to win for him than Wisconsin, Michigan, or Pennsylvania. And it's just, it's a very interesting place that the election is in right now. It's been a complete 180 in the last few weeks where Trump versus Biden, it looked like it could not be going better for Trump. 
and now Trump versus Harris, it looks like it could not be going worse for Trump. So it's been a very interesting turnaround and going into the DNC convention, I believe next week, I believe it starts on August 19th, and going to the first debate on September 10th, it'll be very interesting to see how the polls change, develop, or stay the same. Because we have a very close race that will come down to the wire, and I think we'll have that either way. But it's really possible that Trump or Harris, depending on how the next few weeks go, could open up a lead one way or another for one of the candidates. And it's not unprecedented. In a past video I did going over Republican nominees and Democratic nominees from a few days ago, I showed there were parts where the leading candidate went up and down and that the winning candidate was not the one leading in the summertime. So there's precedent for the race to fluctuate. But the fact is we're not going to really know until Election Day. But this race is very close. And right now you have to assume it's a 50-50 race. And lastly, just showing the national vote, uh, the national polls, excuse me, Harris now leads Trump, 47.6 to 47.1, and it's a 0.5 lead, but again, Trump had the lead over Harris, and Harris is, rega or is taking the lead from him. It's, I don't really know how else to describe it. I mean, of course, you could just completely discredit the polls and say they're not accurate, but I think you're doing so at your own peril at that point. Because if you ignore all the polls and just say, no, Trump is actually doing great right now, I think you're ignoring the truth, which is Trump had a lead, and for one reason or another, Trump has blown that lead. Whether it's not his fault, whether it's Harris's momentum has gotten the lead from him, that could be a reason. We don't know the reason is, but we know that Harris has taken the lead from Trump, and now I think it's on Trump and his campaign to do campaign events and get the lead back. Because if nothing changes... This lead for Harris should only grow and give her a better shot at winning the election. But two things could be true at once. Donald Trump is now the most popular he's ever been in his time, according to the polls, at campaigning and running for office. But he's also facing off against, according to polls, his most popular Democratic incumbent. So this election is very, very close. It's not, it's not like the sky is falling for President Trump, but at very least, it's you better start looking up. Because things are getting very, very close. And if Trump's not careful, Kamala Harris's 0.5% lead could become a 2 or 3% lead very quickly. And things just start looking really dicey for Trump's prospects in November. It's not too late for Trump to turn it around or for Harris to falter. But it's also not too late for Harris's support to grow. So this is definitely one we're going to have to watch very, very closely. And very well, each polls that come out each day may give us a sign of how the race is heading. So that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to give this video a like and click subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos like this one leading up all the way to Election Day. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in a future video.